if this triggers you, if me reviewing her, this is all under fair use. This is what she put out here publicly. Um, if this is going to bother you, please remain calm in the chat or exit your way out. You're adults. It is what it is. But uh, this is going to be an evolving mess because it, we're going to start with Coffin Doffer and just get worse. Okay, great. I, I've not seen any of her doing anything good for anybody besides herself um, and promoting her career. Great, but she's a beautiful woman. Sparkle Pussy, do you want pom-poms to be her cheering squad? You're allowed to do that. If you want the pom-poms and to be her number one cheerleader, you can do that. Absolutely. Okay, let's go. Yeah, um, Mary. Um, yeah, there's there's that. Thank you for that good point. Okay, here we go. This is Coffin Doffer's live stream from today. We're going to start with Coffin Doffer and we are going to go into Sweetie Pilo and Donna Serafina. It's a whole shit storm of misinformation today. So let's go. Two um these threats that were made the online threats contain photographs of guns we said that within 24 hours that's where i got let me go forward she's talking about first it out other situations in the beginning of this in, in law enforcement i mean he's all chummy chummy we have them we we they are forever memorial okay me to search this i think they would have waved him Come on. you have a state statute in georgia between Okay, I thought that was about. Um, so this entire video is titled "What in the World is Happening on the Sebastian Rogers Case," and she only talks about Sebastian Rogers the last like twenty minutes. Heat seeking. Uh, uh, now one is the. She's talking about the Kentucky life and boats and crazy mobiles. That everybody's a huge believer in giving blood because we know. Oh come on! They've specifically asked for that. Counts of attempted murder. That any of these people, if they get out into the population, um, we saw it with that Texas Come on. last hour or so. I'm sorry. But uh, as it as it was left, no new developments. Day seven. All oh, right. Last but a hundred percent not least is Sebastian Rogers. Uh, many of you in the chat, many of you in Twitter uh, that are in this true crime community, we have been watching the Sebastian Rogers case from day one. Sebastian Rogers, 15 years old, went missing Tennessee went to bed one night uh, with his um, only his mother uh, in the house. Uh, she hears a thud somewhere between 10:30, 11 ish at night, and uh, never goes and checks on him. Kind of you know, be quiet in there, get to bed. And typical teenager making noise in their bedroom. I mean, this whole weird situation and the posturing thing over a thud and everybody being the parent of the year that would get up and check on these things. Come on now, be realistic with yourself. If you have teenagers and hear a thud, it's very common to hear thuds in their bedroom. Sorry, it is what it is, but go ahead. And the next morning at six, he's not there. For those of you who have never heard of Sebastian Rogers, uh, that in a thumbnail is, is where we're, is um, that case. Um, where we're at is the case to me is starting to grow cold. It's been over six months. Uh, we saw this happen uh, and I'm seeing these little green hearts. I don't know who is doing that, but thank you. Yes, uh, Sebastian Rogers. All of us, our heart goes out to this kid. He's autistic. For those of you who've seen pictures of him, like this great smile, um, the situation with his family, his parents are divorced. Uh, they don't get along. It's, it's just been a hot mess of drama from the beginning. From the very beginning, from week one. From week one, when people found out that there was a divorce involved in this situation, they made it into a complete shit show. And that's the truth of it. Anybody who gets involved in this case is drugged through the mud. Like the father's drugged through the mud, of course. The Proudfoots are drugged through the mud. The, anybody trying to help. Chloe was this investigator out there. She was drugged through the mud. The Cajun army was drugged through the mud, whether they were legitimate or not legitimate. The, the Uvalde, you know, which I know is legitimate, went out there. The Uvalde Foundation that she knows is legitimate. Legitimate how? Yes, they have a legitimate 501c3, but as far as anything else they claimed, you can go back and see, we detail those videos. The head of the Uvalde Foundation was on a hunger strike at the same time he was claiming to be on the ground in Tennessee trying to help the Sebastian Rogers case. Two things cannot be at the same time, and it is what it is. I've reviewed this before. He has done this before. This is so frustrating, out of control. I've got a lot to say today, by the way, because my inbox, my text messages have been blowing the fuck up about TikTokers. Oh, y'all, I don't mess with that shit. I don't want that shit over here. Those TikTokers are nothing but drama. They have done nothing but interject themselves in a case that they, all of them have caused nothing but problems. They don't care about what's actually going on. They have a huge source of misinformation. They like to point fingers here, there, everywhere. I want nothing to do with it. Nothing to do with any of it. It's become such an evolving shit show of who's who of messiest of messes. And I'm so unimpressed. Nobody cares. I mean respect is earned but uh it has become such a complete shit show and every single character that's doing the most is out in full effect these tiktok quits um Anne, are you in here yet i don't know if you're in here yet sorry i haven't looked down yet 
Um, I can go back to my text messages between Am and I, probably Revival and I. When these women were trying to get attention over here, they came and sat. They all were on a live stream, restreaming T Rev 757, saying how much they respected and admired T Rev. And he was just this amazing person. And then they were telling their audience that they were waiting on Chris Proudfoot to jump on the live stream with them. They were looking for a clout and attention from jump. Anybody given that shit, it's a recycled garbage. They all do the shitty shit. I'm sorry, these are grown ass adults who signed up to do these things on behalf of what? Because they wanted attention. TikTokers are, that's a whole new world. There is very few that I respect. Very, very few that I respect. And so far I haven't seen one interject themselves in this case that I respect. That's it. But I heard they are in full effect. The rumor mill is starting. I've been trying to debunk some of the rumors that have been started, such as the pants situation, all of these things. I'm not interested because it is absolutely going nowhere fast. And they've been looking to get an in on YouTube all along. And now they're just being given that in. Oh, it LFT, real tight. It's just, it's exhausting at this point. If anybody knows, well, you're going to see what I spent my morning listening to. This is, this is unbelievable. Just Samantha, the damage being done to all of them, Seth included. I don't give a shit if you don't like him. If we disagree with what he has done, we can have all of the feelings. You can have all the feelings. You can think he is suspect as hell. You can do all these things. But at the end of the day, they are all still the parents of a missing child, including Seth. I can have empathy and I can also side eye the fuck out of you and dislike you at the same time. That can coexist. There's a world out here that we don't have to fawn over parents of missing children. We don't have to be fan clubs of any of them. I'm a fan club of wanting this child brought home. That's it. I'm not a team. I'm not a nothing. I want this child and everybody else that is missing to be found and brought home. Every human life deserves to be brought home. I think Seth has been a part of a lot of the drama. I also side eye some of the other stuff that is going on too. There's a lot. And the whole side thing and the back and forth shit has gotten us nowhere. But you'll see that in this again. These people are pushing Seth's narrative. It is what it is. We have to talk about it. it. We can't ignore that it's a big factor in this. Unfortunately, as many people would like us to just blindly support. I'm sorry, that's not possible. Because if we want to talk about the fact of how we got here, we have to talk about it openly. And we have to address things head on. All things can be true. Somebody can be going through the worst time of their life and also take the opportunity to exploit their own loved ones. We've seen it time and time again. It happened in Marwan McCray's situation. And that is horrifying, but it's the reality. People get desperate and desperate people do desperate things. And it's, it's really sad. But at the same time, I'm gonna tell you very openly, clip this for the haters. Clip this for the ones sitting on the benches that can't do the same thing that we do and just talk about it. Um, abuse re-victimizing your victim by using media and social media to do that at the worst time of your life is still abuse. I don't care if you are weaponizing a traumatic situation where you're also a victim, you are re-victimizing a victim. And intentionally re-victimizing your victim over and over again, who by my opinion, sorry. Sorry, Dexter had to let you guys know he was here. And he was He's, he's telling me that if I don't get his treat soon, he's going to have a fit. Anyway, re-victimizing your victim in any way, shape, or form is still abuse. Abuse is abuse is abuse. Mental abuse, physical abuse, it's all abuse. And that's what we're watching. And I have a real hard time with it. I have a real hard time with it. And it is what it is. And to watch other women willingly do this to this family and to Katie especially hurts my heart. It absolutely hurts to watch people take every opportunity, especially other women, while they claim that they stand against DV, they claim that they stand against sexual assault, they claim that they are victims of it themselves, and then they take every opportunity to re-victimize Katie. It bothers me. It really does. Yeah. I don't know if Katie's guilty of a single thing, but I know she's an abuse victim, and they're doing everything to re-victimize her. Okay, carrying on. Thank you, sis. There. And they were drugged through the mud. Um, now, which I wanted to bring them on, Nick the Hat, who I knew from the Cavalcante case and, um, and riddle me this. Why would an FBI, an ex FBI agent be aligned with felons, people who are on felony probation parole? Again, you can have a record, but doesn't it say something a little odd to you that an ex FBI agent's sources are people on felony parole? Another fugitive case who does a good job. He goes on scene and you can hear, he puts out the police radar. Uh, I would listen to that at night. He and T Rev, another account. They're very good fugitive chasers. I mean, at least I think they spend the money on. He just said T Rev 757 is a good fugitive chaser. T Rev 757, the same mofo that brought on fake calls 
in the Madeline Soto case and many other cases. She just shouted out T-Rev 757 as a fugitive hunter and good at what he does. Ma'am, exactly what does he do besides set up fake phone calls? on getting um, you know, scanners so that we can hear the police radar. I mean, we all knew in our community and on Twitter when Cavalcante was caught before he was caught, hours before mainstream media broke, we, we knew. So it's great because these people spend their time, spend their money. Uh, they spend their subs money, ma'am. Spend their um, passion on doing these sorts of cases, right? They are they are what I call true you know, YouTubers. I'm not really a YouTuber. I guess I am, I have a YouTuber. Those are, those are true YouTubers, the one that stage calls to re-victimize and pretend that there's somebody related to a case, a horrific case of abuse. Okay. Yep. They're true YouTubers. YouTube account. I have a podcast account. Oh. Um, this is not, this is not my life. You know, I'm employed by a, a this is going to be really hard to get through all of this because the sweetie Pilo and Donna Serafina part gets even worse. Other company. I have, uh, you know, my media employment. Um, I run training, uh, for self-defense and, and fire, uh, uh, firearms, long and short guns. This I do for advocacy. This I do for education, hopefully. She claims this is advocacy. This is her words, not mine. Meanwhile, touting the worst of the worst, the most exploitive pieces of shit on this app, she and she claims this is advocacy while praising those guys. Um, this I do because my counterparts who train me, and I've shared this before, they're dying. Like they're dying on the vine. And, and that's when I first started interviewing them. You know, people who have mentored and trained me because they have so much to give to the true crime community. It's so insane that I watch who is running true crime um, podcasts and things, and most of them, or at least a huge majority are criminals. Every time I look around, I, I'm sh surprised. I do not do criminal backgrounds on YouTubers. I don't do criminal backgrounds on people. You don't have to, you don't have to do any of that to know what these people are about. You don't, you don't have to do any of that. It's publicly available. You don't even have to do anything semi nefarious. All you have to do is put a name in Google or just go check out the millions of videos that are posted about these people and who they're aligned with and what they do. People that I engage with in Twitter, I would spend my whole life doing that uh, with the, all the engagement that I have. I Absolutely. Yep. Sparkle, I would. I would still feel the same way. Nothing about her has ever changed my opinion. Don't do that. What I care about, though, I care about yeah. Sebastian Rogers. I care about the fact that Dog and Nick put up $50,000 to try to help encourage someone to come forward with information about that. I care about that. So she cares about the money that was promised by Dog and Nick. Okay. So the FBI reward wasn't enough, but she cares about what Dog and Nick are doing. Okay. Meanwhile, I guarantee she probably is selectively not watching what Nick and his buddies are actually saying and doing to this family. Okay. I care that they have shined a renewed focus on Sebastian for a case that was languishing like Summer Wells. Uh, Ma'am, no, no. All they did was create more ruckus and misinformation, but go on. It's like I'm reliving Summer Wells again. If you look back six months after Summer Wells. Brantley, thank you for becoming a member. Welcome to the cabana. Wells went missing to this point in time right now with Sebastian Rogers, the same exact Deal. You got all sorts of crazy statements that are inconsistent that were made by the mother in this case. This is Jennifer Koffendoffer, Chico. This is, that's who this is. She is an ex FBI agent. You have a child that most likely did not just walk away and no one has seen them. Now, could they have walked away and somehow got picked up or somebody coordinated them being taken? Or, you know, in other words, parents don't always know. I know supposedly he didn't have Wi-Fi. I know supposedly he didn't have any way to connect. But did he connect at school? Was he using somebody else's phone? And he said, listen, I'm going to come out at 4 o'clock in the morning, Sunday night, at, you know, Monday morning for school. And, and um, yeah, let's get together. We don't know. We really That's right. We don't know. We don't know. That's the only thing I agree with her on. really don't know. But I can tell you this. This is criminal at this point. People who... And another one who is going against what we directly know from law enforcement. Yes, you can have your feelings on the FBI offering a reward, but until law enforcement says this is a criminal investigation, we know it's an open investigation. The last time they pushed the criminal investigation, it was corrected because that came from news media. People grabbed onto it. It was repeated. It's an open investigation. At this point in time, nothing is off the table. Foul play is still an option, but there's no signs of foul play. The parents have been cooperative. They've been vetted, and that's where it lands. That's it. Who don't understand this is criminal. I believe it to be criminal at this point. Well, good I you. don't believe Sebastian Rogers, like... Connor Jack Oswalt, which I'd like to compare those different. She is connected to Seth and Tony and Nick the Hat and all of that group. She is directly connected and has been, they were supposed to go on live stream with her today. Those cases, but their years were a couple of years apart. You know, there's a big difference between 15 and 17. There is in every way. I've had three of them. It's very, very different. And no, do I think he's just out there making it on his own and, and you know, hanging out with homeless people? I don't think that.
Someone caused his disappearance. And that person will hopefully someday be held or people responsible. And we don't know if somebody did cause his disappearance. There's still the possibility that he walked out that door, either harmed himself or was harmed in the elements trying to go somewhere. We don't know. There is many possibilities beyond that somebody and something nefarious happened. Unfortunately, as much as people want to get stuck in the weeds, all possibilities are on the table. And those are two possibilities that people want to glance right over. Is that the Proudfoots? We don't know. They're not cleared. Seth isn't cleared either, although, and I'm probably not going to do it this live, but I have some very new, interesting information that all of you are going to want to hear about. I just have to, it's in document form. I need to get it out there and I need to uh, show it on the screen. And But that'll probably be my live on Monday. I'll Dangling information like she knows something that's relevant. She doesn't. Nobody does. Law enforcement is keeping everything really close to the vest on this. Even an ex-FBI agent is not going to, with a social media persona like she has and how she interjects herself, they are not going to give her any type of information. Do it on Monday. Um, but this is a way of keeping people engaged. It's another tactic of content farming. Come on, people. We all know what's going on here. Live from New York City. I'm going to be in New York City for a special shoot on a case. But I just want to I just want to point out this is a criminal, in my opinion, from what I see. When I see the FBI come out with $50,000, I think I did this before. I'm going to up to $50,000. So through it really quick. I'm the FBI agent, say, and I have opened a police cooperation case that we talked about before. Now I have my police cooperation case so I can actually do things and justify it. I'm going to have a file review on it. I'm going to, my supervisor is going to keep track of everything I've done and I plan to do and that I'm doing. So it's a legitimate case, police cooperation case. Now I'm going into my, uh, because I'm working closely with the sheriff's office and everybody, and I'm now going to go to my supervisor and I'm going to say, I want 50 grand to try to, or to offer as a reward. He's going to say, oh, yeah, right. I want to see why you think 50 grand is going to do anything. You need to justify this. I am next going to sit down. I'm going to write a novel. What would be some of the reasons that I could use to justify a $50,000 reward by the FBI? What? Well, some of the reasons are that they truly believe he was either abducted, taken by somebody, coordinated, or that he was murdered and that multiple people know about what happened. And they are hoping the low hanging fruit, somebody that knows or might have information will come forward and they are dangling that $50,000 carrot. I'm going to write all that up. I think now, I don't know because I'm not on that case, but that's the kind of information that my supervisor is going to want. I can't just, can you imagine if every missing person case, we you know, could just get 50 grand for it? It'd be nice, but we can't. It's got to be a case where we think it could legitimately result in actionable uh, evidence, facts coming forward, people coming forward. So they've proven that because not only is it going to my supervisor, now it's going to my ASAC, now it's going to my SAC, and then my SAC is going to the program manager at headquarters. And I know because I was a program manager, <coughs> uh, supervisor at headquarters in the weapons of mass destruction. She just told you she didn't work missing persons. So when you have these huge dollar amounts that you need approval for, for whatever it's for, you got to get up the chain, clear to headquarters approval. So that's what, that's why that happened. I want to read to you. But Seth said it was because he was working with FBI hand in hand. That's according to Betty. You, a text I got today. Okay. So this is interesting right here. Of course, it's an unnamed source. Ready for this? Yep. Ready. Fire in the hole. Show the proof. One minute. One minute. I'm looking. It's important. Um, okay. Ex FBI agent with anonymous sources and doesn't show proof. Okay. Okay, here we go. But I'm supposed to respect this person. Okay. You ready? I have received death threats, rape threats, and honestly, we think. Oh, I better not say this part. I'm, I'm going to skip this part. Oh, imagine that we're going to skip a section of the text, but we're just supposed to run with this and believe this. Well, people will. But we think so and so is trying to scare us away. And somebody's naming names again, so she's dangling it out here. This situation is insane. Oh, this is some, I better go on. Um, basically, the dramatics. Basically, this person is saying it's the worst situation they have stepped into, that they've never seen this amount of hate and of distractions on a missing persons case. Yeah, some of us have been saying that from jump, that there's been distractions all along and all of the characters have inserted themselves. And then all of the characters seem to get these unknown threats, but they can't prove the threats. They can't show the threats. They're pretty much non-existent threats, but we keep getting told about them, but there's no proof to back up these things. And if people are being threatened, why aren't they making reports to FBI, LE, Sumner County, TBI? Why isn't that happening? Oh, it's being made into content instead of actually concern, right? Okay. 